The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. We've seen a stampede of Republicans call the president lawless. Today, Senator Ted Cruz said the president disregards the law. Just this weekend, Congressman Paul Ryan and Eric Cantor trotted out similar lines. It's all variations of what we've seen from the right time and again. Calls for impeachment, conspiracies that the president was born in Kenya, loose talk of him being a dictator. And instead of putting an end to this toxic talk, some on the right seem to revel in it. The latest example comes from an event involving GOP Congressman Jim Bridenstine. The video was posted on conservative website WorldNet Daily, and they say it's likely it was recorded in the past few months. Take a listen. Obama is not president as far as I'm concerned. He should be executed. And we come back and we can go The Muslims that he is shipping into our country through pirates and commercial jets. should be executed and he says nothing our president is called an enemy combatant and the congressman doesn't even condemn it no he doesn't he simply uses this as an opportunity to call president obama lawless and then this happens yeah i have time for one more question yes ma'am the only way i see out of this is to overwhelmingly change the senate so that we then can impeach the SOB. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you look so sweet. <laughs> laughter, laughter when the president is described that way. Whatever happened to reasonable disagreement? What happened to leadership in Washington? What happened to simple decency? We've emailed the congressman's office for a statement. As of yet, we've got no response. Joining me now are Michelle Cottle and Goldie Taylor. Thank you both for coming on the show tonight. Thanks, Reverend. Thank you, Reverend. Goldie, how can an elected member of Congress hear vicious rhetoric like this and simply let it go? He can do it if he has a very, very conservative base uh, with his part, with his county GOP. He can do it if he has a very conservative red district. He can do it if his national party, people like Rice Previs, you know, fail to call him out on a daily basis. I mean, he can get away with this kind of thing. The fact of the matter is, the people who are uttering words of impeachment are people who don't understand the standard of of. of of law that it takes to to bring an impeachment articles of impeachment they don't understand the process uh, that it takes to work its way through the house and through the senate what they really don't understand is what an impeachment process really does to this country it shuts down everything it shuts down the talk about jobs it shuts down talk about growing this economy but before it they shuts down, shut it down you know, they have to have something to try an impeachment on there's not even that is the a charge that, that, that is the legal and, and they're not even michelle acting like there's a charge they're just calling him lawless without ever saying breaking what law if the lawlessness is reflected by his saying he's going to use an executive order he is the least uh, uh, one to use it he's used it least of any president in the last six or seven presidents so that can't be serious Michelle <laughs> it's not so much serious as just the way the game is now played everybody likes a strong president while their team is in power and then when the other team's in power they're just outraged and scandalized by how he's abusing the Constitution but a 
especially with this president, there's a big section of the Republican base that just views him as illegitimate, and they don't care how they get him out of office or how they negate his presidency. They just can't quite believe they've been saddled with someone who's, who's legitimately, they just refuse to acknowledge. You know, Goldie, this wasn't the first time the GOP lawmakers uh, have failed to condemn this kind of language that we heard in that room with this congressman. Take a listen to town hall last summer. What I need from you is to know what you can do, you and your fellow non-communist colleagues in the lower house, what you can do to stop these communist tyrannical executive orders laid down by this foreign-born American-hating communist despot. What can you do for me? Thank you for your question. Um, he said it loud enough that you all heard it. So, I, I mean, we can disagree without being disagreeable. We can go through our differences without being ugly. And, and this is the kind of stuff, I mean, you're always going to have friends. You're always going to have people that will say extreme things. Sure. But whatever happened to leadership, Goldie? Whatever happened to people saying, wait a minute, maybe when I was younger and more strident, I would say irresponsible things, but I'm not going to tolerate the president or anyone being uh, characterized or in, in some ways threatened. Let's deal with the issues and the policy. What happened to that kind of leadership? Well, that kind of leadership seems not to exist today, at least on this issue. At the end of the day, we're talking about a small uh, group of party activists, the people who run st uh, county and state parties. And these are the people who really work campaigns. These are the people who show up and show out at every election. These are the people who raise those small dollar contributions to fuel campaigns. So this is the kind of base that you want to placate. Uh, you know, but the problem here is, is that it gets dangerous. This stuff doesn't happen in a bubble anymore. You're independents. You're more, uh, you're more moderate Republicans. They begin to hear this kind of ugliness come up out of their own party. And you begin to lose your moderate Republicans. You begin to lose independents. And you become a localized party never able to recapture a national election. Michelle, Senator Ted Cruz called into Glenn Beck's program today. And uh, here's what he had to say. Listen to this. There is a pattern of lawlessness in this administration that, that is breathtaking. We have never seen a president like President Obama, who if he doesn't agree with the federal law, he refuses to enforce it. And he openly defies it over and over and over again. Uh, he, he simply disregards the law, and, and that ought to concern everybody. Unchecked power in the presidency, an imperial presidency, it's fundamentally inconsistent with individual liberty. Imperial presidency, unchecked power. It seems to be the new line they're running down, Michelle. Of course, they never in any way give an example, even remotely, of what they're talking about. But they are repetitive with this new line, imperial presidency, unchecked power. You know, in this case, they talk about appointments, controversial appointments to the Labor Relations Board or laws that he chose not, that the president has ostensibly chosen not to, uh, you know, enforce. But it all comes down to Ted Cruz knows which side his bread is buttered on. He has risen to power and made a name from himself, for himself by playing to the passions and paranoia of a lot of people uh, in the base who just can't quite believe this president you know, is still in office. So I think kind of the extreme language plays very well to the people he's talking to, and he's not really all that worried about a broad-based appeal right now. You know, uh, go to Senator Chuck Grassley uh, is demanding a legal defense uh, for the president's use of executive actions. Now, during his time in Capitol Hill, he's seen seven different presidents govern all of whom have used the executive orders. What difference is it about President Obama? Well, you know, uh, there are many, many clear differences about President Obama, uh, but chief among them is that, you know, he was elected by a new class of voters who came up and showed up and showed out, and that, you know, the electorate is expanding. What is different about Obama is that tomorrow, uh, tomorrow's election is going to look very different for Republicans, that they have to look about a new way about winning, because this president has truly changed the game. And so what's different, what's different here is the fear is stoked higher by any number of reasons. Oh. Uh in your view, Michelle, are they playing to the crowd 
or I'm talking about some of the far right leadership, are they playing to the crowd or are they really people that came out of the crowd and believe this? <laughs> well, I think it's split. Ted, Ted Cruz is a really smart guy, but he's also extremely conservative, um, and he has to walk that fine line. But yes, he is playing to some of the most kind of conspiracy theory-minded folks in the party. He is playing to some of the most kind of conspiracy theory-minded folks in the party. Well... I'm going to have to leave it there, and if we hear from Congressman Bradenson's office, we will let you know. Michelle Cottle and Goldie Taylor, thanks for your time this evening. Thanks, Robin. Ahead, the GOP has a new plan to win elections, and how's this for transparency? It involves a fake website. Stay with us. The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide.